Okay, so what went wrong? Yeah, you know, this is a good question and one that I think people keep asking themselves, why did we stop? What went wrong? Uh, and a bit of the answer is actually looking at the number of warheads, the, the nuclear race. It started to reach in the 50s and 60s, but it started to slow down. And clearly by the 80s and 90s, the trend stopped. At least in the US, not so much in Russia. That's right. Um, but there was a push to slow down this race. And so the question is, what started to lead it? The US gets the moon. Great. We send six missions to the moon. Great. We're all there. Everyone's happy. Well, the race was to get to the moon. What do you do in a marathon when you cross the finish line? Do you keep running? Yeah, I mean, if the goal had been to develop space technology or to understand space better or astronomy, then you would have kept going. But if the goal was beat the pants off the Russians at something high profile, okay, mission accomplished. We've beaten the pants off the Russians at something high profile. We can stop now. We can stop now. And the Russians kind of realize this. And the US and Russia also realize it's a slippery slope if we continue at this current rate that we need at some level to re realize that space maybe needs a timeout from the nuclear race, maybe needs a timeout from this race on Earth. So this is when we started having the space treaties come along, which you're going to talk about more on the space law section of this course. That's right, because it governs so much about what we do in space. And not surprisingly, they come in around the late 60s, early 70s, right at the culmination of this great race, the moon. And in fact, shortly after, in the mid 70s, we have the first Apollo Soyuz mission. So here the Russians and Americans stop competing and say, we're going to share technology. And in principle, working together should make things go faster, but in practice it takes away the rivalry <laughs> motivation and so things kind of grind to a halt. And that's pretty much what happened. The US and Russia shared their secrets, they worked together, they achieved peace in space, and then they said, well, all right, well, what do we do now? And so they had to shift their focus. But it wasn't just that. There's a few other issues that come into mind. So we have the race is over. Uh, we kind of find a nice peace in space. But there's another really key important aspect here, the aspect that drives everything we do. Money. Money. This is, a, 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 I just think, a fantastic image. So here we have year, so 55 on the left, 2015 on the right, 2014 uh, budgeted dollars. So this is the adjusted for inflation and what we'd be spending in 2014. And there's a bit of a peak in the 60s and the 70s. Yes, so you can see um, it's as a uh, percentage of the federal dollars. So it peaks at what? Almost 5%. Almost, yes, almost 5% of all the federal dollars spent in the US. And then it drops down and it's been sitting at you know, about half a percent ever since. I mean, you think about it. So this is 10 times more spending in the Apollo era than we do for NASA today as a fraction of the much larger US economy today. Exactly, that's right. You know, and, and in total, you know, you're looking at the Apollo program costs on order of $150 billion. You know, uh, no one's gonna point to that level of sustainability. I mean, I think it would be great if we got $150 billion, but unless you have a really good reason, which as you said, we kind of stopped having that reason. Why are you going to keep spending this money? And I remember at the time, there lots of, yes, sure, we're spending a lot of money on NASA, but it's uh, um, less than the US are spending on lipstick in the same number of years and things like this. So you've always got to put these things in perspective. But still, it's a lot more than they were spending on overseas aid. Yep. And then again, it was much less than they were spending on the Vietnam War. So is it, it big or is it small? It depends what you're comparing it to. That's true. That's right. And it also depends on some of other factors. And so let's actually look at what that number means. So here again is a, a similar version of this. This is how much the, in billions Apollo was spending, again, adjusted for inflation uh, per year, peaking in the mid 60s, as he said, to make that jump into 1969 to actually win that race and get into moon. 1972 is the, pretty much the last mission to land on the moon and uh, Apollo 16 and 17. And by 73, it's done. It only took a year after essentially realizing we're not going to send any more to stop spending here. But the budget had been sinking for long before that. So by the time uh, uh, Neil Armstrong landed on the moon, the budget was already well off its peak. Exactly. So the budget was really shortly after the Russians started putting humans into space. And they said beating the pants off the Americans that all of a sudden an increase of $40 billion in spending in a year. That's a lot of money. It is indeed. But what does this money go to? I think this is the question. We, we say, all right, it costs $150 billion. Where does $150 billion go to? 
well, I guess, like with all you know, the telescope projects we're also familiar with, it's people by and large. The actual cost of like the fuel and the metal is a tiny fraction. It's the cost of the person who designs the metal or the person who uh, purifies the fuel or whatever. If you employ uh, 5,000 to 10,000 highly trained people, that costs money. In fact, you can see below the cost of um, the different breakups and the green is purely just research and development. So this green fraction at billions is just people time. It's nothing else. But even most of the cost of the launch vehicles would again be the people That's who right. are building it, the people who are designing it and so on. The parts, you're, you're right, themselves are the least fraction of it. It's all of that time to hire those people to do the work and train it. And this obviously raises the question, uh, what happens when with people if you're employing and you no longer have a purpose? If your business model is no longer sustaining and you don't know what you're doing and you don't have the money to do it, do you keep paying those people? Most businesses probably would say no. So what happened next? Well, it's actually interesting to put this into context with the other space programs. So this is specifically looking at just human space programs, humans going up. We're not looking at Mars or anything like that. We can see this little tiny non-existent blip is Mercury, and this little green blip is Gemini. And this enormous red blip, uh, Apollo, and then you've got the space shuttle, which kept going for a long time. It kept going for a long time and was pretty costly, and we'll talk about that a little bit more later, but it's still nowhere near the size of the Apollo spending. And when you were mentioning earlier, how do you uh, beat someone? How do you take that next step 10 years down the road? Well, you choose your goal 10 years down the road and you increase the funding by a lot. This is why the Americans were behind. They weren't spending as much as they should have. Now, as the program trailed, funding for NASA kept and it went to things like the space, the space shuttle and the space station. So it's not that to say NASA was just stopped, but as you mentioned earlier, the funding level, the amount of money went to about half a percent of the federal budget. Still a lot of money, but let's have a what if. So the NASA budget today is about $24 billion US dollars, and that's about half a percent of the federal budget. Now imagine if we had 5%. We would have a budget of $240 billion. Look, imagine what you can do with that, Paul. Imagine all the projects you could build alone for $240 billion. Why don't we do that? Well, I don't think you'd, any person who proposed that would get elected. That's right, because ultimately, the politicians who choose it respond to the people. And if the people don't support it, they're not going to really drive spending $240 billion into a program they don't even know that they want. So here we're looking at kind of the public support of space missions. Uh, data started from the late 70s. So this is right after the Apollo era. So we're not really looking at the peak of it. We're looking shortly after. Uh, purple is related to should we keep that space shuttle going? So for record reference here, the space shuttle was still a lot less than Apollo, about half. The orange what, and, and blue was, was the moon landing worth it? In fact, if you notice in the 70s, less than half the American public thinks it was actually worth it. Isn't that an interesting way to think about it? Whereas even today, we're seeing an increase now, it's actually a 70% where people think that it was worth it. Well, it was a difficult time, of course. You had the oil crisis, you had the aftermath of the Vietnam War. People were depressed in the 70s and had lots of other things going on in their lives. And this is, I think, the important thing is we, we often want to say, oh, the race is just about the moon or it's just about doing things in space. We have to realize the money comes as part of the federal budget and there are politicians and real people who decide it. And if other people have other interests or other priorities or other cares, that money's not gonna be in there. Then you add in, well, why? You stop going to the moon.